Continuing our coverage of the tragedy in Heston, more officers from around Kansas are heading there to help. Early this morning, Highway Patrol Trooper Ben tweeted that he is taking a 12-hour shift in Heston. He's normally stationed in the north central part of Kansas. Our 41 Action News crews have been in Heston since the hours after Cedric Ford killed three people on Thursday. Mike Marusars joins us live with the details on the charges and how this close-knit community is responding. Good morning, Mike. Uh, good morning, Richard and Jane. You know, this morning it is cold here in Heston as the investigation continues behind me at Excella Industries. The focus is really on the other side of the building, out of our reach from cameras, because there's a street that remains closed this morning. It's called the finishing area. We're painting on the lawn mowing equipment that they manufacture here is done, and that is apparently where the shooter worked. Just to give you an indication of how impactful this is, the Wichita Eagle, Wichita, by the way, about 30 minutes away. This is the front page this morning, their headline, After Violence, Some Answers. And that is especially true for investigators as they continue to narrow into who exactly may have been involved here. We know this morning that a woman has been charged in connection to this. Her name is Sarah Hopkins, and she is accused of providing a pistol in a semi-automatic assault-style rifle that was used to carry out the killings here. She's charged with giving those to a known convicted felon. Dia Wall has more on that side of the story. According to her LinkedIn profile, Sarah Hopkins teaches at a daycare in Newton. But before that, she worked at Excel Industries on the assembly line alongside her one-time fiancé, Cedric Ford. The pair were set to be married in May of 2015, according to this wedding registry we found listed at J.C. Penney. But according to court documents, Hopkins moved out of their shared home in July of that year. In August, with the help of police, she retrieved her guns. Later that month, Hopkins says Ford threatened her, and she gave the guns back. Hopkins later pawned that AK-47 semi-automatic and 40 caliber handgun, but bought them back on February 5th. The ATF says those were the same weapons found on Ford inside the factory when he was shot and killed. Dia Wall, 41 Action News. Uh, just incredible as we continue to hear more, you know, with two to 300 people inside this plant doing work at the time. You could only imagine the chaos that was happening inside. Last night, we attended a vigil that took place right across the street from the plant where uh, several dozen people came to show their respects to the people who died. As that gunfire began, people scattered inside Excel Industries, and some didn't even realize that they had been shot until they ran outside. He looked happy. Happy? Yeah. Yeah, he looked, he looked like he hopped out with almost like a smile on his face. Uh, just, and then that was uh, a report from one of the people who worked inside who saw the shooter as that shooting was taking place. Also, Dennis Britton, who we heard from, one of the people who was shot, he described the feelings. He tried to escape the gunfire and then taking a bullet. It shows that this town is like a big family. They stick together and, you know, when something like this happens, you know, you need people to be there for you. Yeah, just uh, just incredible, you know, as we continue to just incredible as we continue to hear more from people who are in this area. You know, the one thing that I, I think the the most important people who were here at the time of all of this is they really recounted how they made it out alive. Some people helping other people. As we can continue to hear more this morning, we're also getting some indications of how this investigation is leading. We'll have more from that vigil as well. But for now, live in Heston, Mike Maruzars, 41 Action News.